Javier Morales had had a goal assisted on another one. He certainly didn't play like a player that had been on the field 120 minutes the other night. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty remarkable, actually, that um, Javier, at his age and uh, after all the uh, injuries and stuff that he's been through this this past week, he went 90, 120, and 90. It was one of only two players on our team to do that, him and Beckerman. Um, so my hat's off to both those guys. That is not an easy task. Uh, and they both did extremely well through all of those minutes. I guess, Jason, considering those things you just mentioned, his age and the minutes he played before that, were you contemplating holding him out tonight? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It was um, just a communication thing with me. That's how I tend to handle these situations is to talk to the players. You know, Obviously, they didn't, he didn't train at all um, this week, and neither did Kyle. Um, really, really light stuff yesterday, and then go to both those guys and see how they're feeling. And Javier said, I feel great. I'm, I'm having a great time, and I feel like I'm really fit, and I want to keep going. So um, a player like that says that to you, you, you don't have much hesitation. Um, he's, a, he's a very honest person, and he would tell you if he wasn't feeling great or wasn't feeling up to it. Jason, right here. you've won four of your last six, and as we've seen, the goals are starting to come. Is there anything in particular you're seeing from these guys? Um, maybe figured it out, anything in particular over these last six um, games? I think... Yeah, I think that our, our midfield has shown, our midfielders have shown a, a real commitment to, to be involved in attacking plays, to get themselves into dangerous spots, and to even end up in the box, in the opponent's box. Um, the number of times that Ned Grabovoy is at the top of the box or inside of the box, the number of times Javier Morales is in and around the box, in the box to finish plays off is higher than it has been. Um, when we struggle, I just don't feel like we get the right numbers of players involved in attacks. When we score goals, when we create chances, we have you know three midfielders involved in every attack. We have two forwards, and we typically have at least one outside back, and sometimes two. Um, so it just for me, it just takes numbers. And, and in order to get those numbers, it takes a massive amount of commitment from our midfield and from our outside backs to join in. Jason, do you feel at all the first half was maybe an extension of the, the good vibes from the overtime you had on Tuesday that you kind of alluded to you hope would carry over? It could be. Yeah, it could be. I think that, you know, again, just going through this run of games, I think our guys are feeling very confident about what they're doing. I think that they're, they feel good about um, the, the chances that they've been creating over the last several weeks. Tonight, for me, was the first time that I can remember where we finished just about every one of our chances. Um, the chances that should have been finished were finished. Um, and I think if we had done that in, in the Chicago game, comes right off hand, and um, in the game on Tuesday night, you know, we don't even get close to an overtime if we finish our chances. And the Chicago game is probably 3 nothing by halftime as well. So um, that's just been, I think that's the difference from tonight to, to the prior games where we struggled, even going back a ways, you know, to Montreal and to some of those games. If we just finish our chances, we got a lot more points in our pocket. But... Um, that's okay. We don't have to be. We don't have to finish them all in every single game. We'll hope to save all those for the end of the season. Last season, you really struggled against San Jose. Lost all three matches, and this this season so far, you're two and zero. Outscored them five to nothing. Is there something that you've done to deal with them, or mm -hmm. is it just kind of a function of your teams? No, you know, I, I think it's. Um, I think a little bit of both. I think that you know. Tactically, we have a good idea of what San Jose is trying to do, and we also have a good idea where we can really hurt them. I think tonight in particular, we were very, very good in the areas where we can hurt them. Um, and then we're tuned in at the end of the game because I think San Jose causes some real troubles through the second half. Um, and we were fortunate that Ramondo was so on his game. Otherwise, I think they score at least one, maybe two of those goals. Um, so, you know, I think we're a little bit fortunate tonight with the score line. I think it could have, could have been and maybe should have been 3-1 or 3-2. Um, so um, it's a team that, that, that we know that we're in for a battle. So I, I never feel like I have to motivate my team to play against San Jose. Jason, it's, it's career shutout 107 for Nick. How important were some of those big saves? Like you've already acknowledged that it was, it was a big brawl. But what does he bring? You know, we've had, it again, some rotation on the back line with injuries and other things. How important is it for that leadership and those abilities to the team? It's huge. Um, it's huge. You know, I just think that when we have Ramondo and Borchers and um, Wingert and Beckerman on the field and, and Morales, 
uh, grab a void. Those players just bring a, a sense of calm um, and can make the players all around them feel better and more secure. It's an organizational thing. It's a leadership thing. It's a communication thing. And I think um, those guys are, are integral to, to the successes that we have and will hopefully continue to be so. Jason, could you, how do you characterize how Finley played and uh, compared to what he's done the previous games this season? Where does it rank? How important is it if, he, if you think he played very well, how important is that to you going forward? Um, I think tonight was Robbie's best game of the season. Um, Robbie's an interesting case because you know people don't quite understand where what we understand or what we see as a coaching staff because Robbie came into preseason and was like lights out. Um, I, we were all just like so excited to have him back and he was just at the very top of his game because he was coming to us basically not in his preseason or his offseason. He was coming into us midseason. Um, and then he picked up a pretty substantial injury. Uh, and so when he came back from the injury, you know, it was kind of up and down and up and down with that injury and trying to get over it was a little bit of a hassle. Then I think he, he mentally gets over it for the Seattle game. He's, he, I feel like that was a good, really, really good week of training for him. He scores the goal and injures himself again. Um, and so now he's just now, I think, coming back into full fitness from that injury. Um, has looked a little bit hesitant in some of the decisions he's making, and he looks exactly like an injured player would that's coming off an injury. And people that don't understand that he's been going through these injury issues probably would look at it and get frustrated. Um, the coaching staff doesn't. Uh, we have a lot of belief in him, and tonight I think he showed that he's, he's back at the top of his game, and we're very, very happy that he is. Jason, you, you look at uh, Robbie and Jow up top. Um, Obviously, you think speed, but what do you like most about that tandem? Um, you know, seeing Robbie on the TV, he said that they have a, a chemistry and they, and they talk before games yeah. about, you know, not running into one another. What, what do you like most about their, um, their tandem up top? Obviously, lack of size, but uh, tremendous skill. Yeah, no, I think when, if both of them are on their games, you've got two players that can do so many different things, right? I mean, they're, they're very good with the ball. They can bring it down under control in tight spaces and link up passes with the midfielders coming through. They both have excellent speed to get in behind, so the defenders are always going to be wary about the space that they're leaving in behind them. They both finish well. They both, when they're really at the top of their games, can go at defenders 1v1 and make things happen. So they're both just very versatile players, and it's, it's nice to have two guys on the field at the same time that can do those things. I think tonight was Kari Stevenson's first start for you guys. Uh, was that kind of a chance to reward him for his goal Tuesday and maybe go up against his old team? Um, Kari, he started the first two or three matches, three oh, matches sorry. for sorry, us this season. And, um, he's another guy that picked up an injury, a pretty substantial injury to his knee, uh, and it took him a long time to get back to where he was 100%. He came back, he's training, he's contributing in some of the reserve games and the first team games, but he doesn't quite look the same. Um, and so we've just been waiting and waiting and waiting for him to look the same. Um, and I think just over the past 10 days to two weeks, he's really started to look good. And, we're, you know, we see it in the training sessions. And when he starts to look like the old Kari in the training sessions, now you start to think about, okay, when's his chance going to come? And we put him in the game the other night. He scores a goal. And I say, all right, his chance is now. And what, a better, what, a better time could, what better time could you ask for than to play against his old opponent, I mean, his old team? Jason, obviously, you coaches like to look at one game at a time, but looking forward into to Saturday in, in LA, the last time they came here, they beat you two to nothing. What kind of momentum do you feel like these last few games and even this stretch will help you guys carry into that game on Saturday? I think uh, I think that this could be huge again. Um, we scored multiple goals. We finished our chances at a high rate, which we haven't done. I think that was frustrating the players. We got a shutout. Um, we've got now several games with without being beaten. Uh, and we have an opponent that came here and kicked our butt last time. Uh, and so we have all of the, the ingredients uh, that should make for a really motivated and hungry team come Saturday night. Jason, back to Kari, really quick follow-up question on that. Kari is a little bit of a different look to some of the other midfielders that you have. What does he bring to your team, and how does that help out the other players around him? Um, Kari is a very... He's a veteran player, but he's very soft-spoken. Um, I don't feel like he's, a, he's not a big communicator or leader or instructing other players where to go. Um, he's still young into our system. Um, we've seen it many, many times before where we bring experienced players into our team, and they're still trying to figure out exactly where they need to be all the time. Um, 
So he's still asking questions and learning. Um, he's very, got very, very good feet, so he, he fits in well with our midfield. He makes good decisions on the ball, can get himself out of tight spaces, makes smart uh, passes, and then at the end of it all, he has a shot that's arguably the best in the league. So that is the goal, is to get a guy like Kari into matches where he's shooting the ball multiple times a game. I think he once or twice tonight. You know, we, we're looking for probably three a match from somebody like him. RSL Hosts LA at Rio Tinto Stadium on June 8th at 7.30. Get your tickets today.